Hello, and welcome to the November 2023 tarot reading. We have a lot of pressure and a lot of tension from all the changes, which uh, look like they're going to continue over the next few months. And the questions that kept circulating through my mind, a lot of them had to do with Donald Trump. So I decided to ask what the cards might say about him returning to run the U.S. or lead the U.S. or be president or whatever. So that was one question. A second question had to do with the drawing by Dick Allgaier of congressmen sobbing, vomiting, falling on the floor. And uh, the third question was, again, a request for insight into how are the people of the U.S. and the West doing, given the fact that so many governments and institutions have lost their minds, and not very many things are working smoothly. So this is the fourth month that I have been tracking our thoughts and feelings regarding our situation. And I was concerned, it started tracking because I was concerned about the sluggishness and the mournful attitudes, especially the gullibility and the inability to pull out of the stupor that everybody seemed to be in and the confusion over what was happening. So we did briefly take a turn for the better, but now we've had a setback. So let's begin. The questions asked were, number one, is Donald Trump coming back to be president of the United States? Number two, what information or insight can the cards offer regarding the remote viewing by Dick Allgaier and team in which congressmen were crying, vomiting, falling on the floor, and the entire Congress was shutting down as if for the last time? And number three, what is happening with the spirit of the people living in the U.S. and the Western countries at this moment in time in 2023. And the cards drawn were number one, the Knight of Wands. Number two, the Ten of Wands and the Devil. And number three, the Four of Swords. So question number one, is Donald Trump coming back to be president of the United States? Our question here was pretty direct and simple, but the card drawn, the Knight of Wands, does not give a direct and simple answer. It does, however, present us with all of the qualities that Donald Trump expresses, as well as a perspective that not very many people have considered. So... Uh, so let's let's look into this. The Knight of Wands card is known as the Lord of Flame, Thunder, and Lightning. And it carries the message, draw inspiration from the creative power of the storm. I thought that was a, a rather apropos message, given the fact that all the chaos we are currently going through is uh, referred to kind of euphemistically as the storm. So this card is also a card of higher education. Very, very powerful card of higher education. But does it refer to getting a college degree? No. The higher education referred to here is the education gained in the school of life also known as the School of Hard Knocks. It's the education that comes from having lived, loved, cried, been successful, been betrayed, and above all, been forced as individuals to look at our role, our contribution, our part in creating the events that together have shaped our reality and the course of our lives. So the Knight of Wands is a card that represents an adult male, a hothead kind of male, 
and one full of ambition, highly competitive and decisive to the point of abruptness. It symbolizes someone who has a vision that he's pursuing and he is unwilling to edit, rehearse, or hold back any part of who he is. Sounds kind of like Donald Trump. <laughs> this is the card of someone who brings life into a desert where there's very little growth. It represents sovereignty and a masterful approach to life. Knights are also seen to appear when a system or an era is over and deep changes are on the horizon. Changes coming from the core of an individual or the core of a system. And it's the role of the knight to help clear the path toward a new vision while providing protection, order, law and order, and organization until a new civilization or way of life has been set up and actualized. That's the role of the knight. He especially appears in between systems, when one system is coming apart and another one isn't quite together. So when you look closely at the card, you see a man on a sorrel-colored horse. He's wearing a full suit of armor, and it's, it's covered by a bright yellow tunic with salamanders on it. There are red plumes on his helmet and his sleeves, and the wand he carries reaches all the way to the top of the card. Horse and rider are riding through a desert wasteland. There are three pyramids in the distance, and the sky is a light blue color. Now, if the rider on the card represents Donald Trump, the red plumes and the bright yellow tunic with the salamanders on it indicate that he is passionate about what he envisions for the U.S. and that he fully expects to regenerate the country since salamanders are the universal symbol of an ability to walk through the fire unharmed. The salamander's ability to regenerate itself is legendary. But the fact that the salamanders are all curled into circles is both warning and promise. The warning is, don't waste time going in circles that repeat the past. And the promise is one of complete reincarnation and something new. The flowers and the other symbols of nature on the bridle of the horse, plus that bright yellow color of the tunic, points to a deeply intelligent and well-thought-out plan for this regeneration. And, and that's going to be more in tune with nature, with real nature, with mother nature, with human nature. So we talked about sorrel-colored horses back in June in a question about the IRS. But here, our question is about Donald Trump's possible return. So the word sorrel, S-O-R-R-E-L, refers to both a color, reddish brown, or something copper colored, kind of a coppery red. Sorrel is also a lemon flavored plant. And the reddish brown color is the same color as a fox. So since our night is on a sorrel-colored horse, this points to the fact that Trump may be riding into a system that has gone sour, since lemon is considered to be a souring agent. We all know that the system we once had is coming apart, so that's rather obvious. It has gone sour. The sorrel horse may indicate that if Trump does return, Things may go sour for him, and the idea of making America great again just may not be the outcome. However, the reddish-brown color is the same color as a fox, and it indicates that he may be able to outfox his opponents 
and succeed not only in returning, but in regenerating all of us, all the entire country. So the fact that he's riding through a wasteland indicates that he might not have much left to save by the time he returns, if in fact he does return. So since wands are the symbol of willpower and action, that's the wand, willpower and action. When you put these characteris characteristics together with the fact that the knight is moving through a desert and that the wand reaches to the top limit of the card, we have a unique set of messages. First, bringing these three things together, willpower, a desert, and a, a wand that stays inside a framework, those three point to the difficulty of trying to regenerate anything. The will and the creative action find too little support in the desert of America's minds and hearts. The one that does not go beyond the frame of the card points to a set of conventional limits, suggesting that there's nothing new and amazing or inspiring hiding in the wings of the future. And the emptiness of the landscape indicates that if there is to be a future, it will have to come from the pyramids in the distance. Pyramids are symbols of great knowledge and power from the past, from another time. Is the America we once knew already something from another time? Is Trump's return irrelevant? because America has passed the peak of knowledge and power, and from this point on will be seen as something from the past? Pyramids symbolize several other things. One is ancient mystery and the science of transformation. Another is lost wisdom in old civilizations. So does Trump understand the ancient mysteries? And does he know the science of how to transform America into something that is regenerating instead of being torn apart? The Knight of Wands itself is a symbol of power structures from another time. And pyramids are also symbolic of structures that transcend time. So together, these two symbols, knights and pyramids, work as hidden indicators of the possibility that Trump never left because he has become a symbol of something that transcends time. I'll say that again. The Knight of Wands is a symbol of power from another time, and pyramids are also symbolic of structures that transcend time. So together, those two symbols, knights and pyramids, work as indicators, hidden indicators of the possibility that Trump never left because he has become a symbol of something that transcends time. Whether he returns in the flesh or not may be irrelevant because he has become a fixture in the minds of the people. And like the pyramids and the knights of old, he lives on, capable of inspiring action while becoming part of the mythology of our civilization and able to affect lives regardless of whether or not he's physically present or whom his story touches. With Trump as a mythological figure, the light blue sky indicates that some will see him as bringing heaven and earth together, while others will see him only as someone forcefully pushing his way onto others. Keywords for the Knight of Swords are a tactless man, a bold warrior, a quick thinker, fearless crusader, forceful, shrewd, rash, antagonistic, dynamic, expansive, assertive, armed men, 
and adventure. I have to say, a lot of these are qualities that describe Donald Trump. But uh, lastly, what I'll say about this question is the warning that comes from this card is to watch out for those who would rob you of your humanity and your wealth. A fitting warning for the chaotic times that we live in. Who can we trust? Question number two. What information or advice can the cards offer us regarding the remote viewing by Dick Allgaier and team in which congressmen were sobbing, vomiting, falling on the floor, and the entire Congress was shutting down for the last time? So at the risk of beating a dead horse or piling onto this topic one more time, I thought I would ask what the cards had to say. What did they have to tell us about the vision seen by Dick Allgaier that led to the drawing of congressmen sobbing, vomiting in shock as Congress closed down for the last time? And the first card drawn was the Ten of Wands, whose message is pretty rough, pretty straightforward. This is a card of warning that says you can't see the forest for the trees. And because of this, you are likely to make life unnecessarily difficult. That's the message of the Ten of, of Wands. You can't see the forest for the trees. We aren't seeing the forest for the trees. And because of that, we're making or we're going to end up with making life more difficult. So this is the card of someone or some group or something that has abdicated their will and is completely on the wrong track, which can refer to us as well as the Congress. This is a card of wasted energy. As soon as I saw this card, my question became, wow, how do we stop wasting energy and avoid making life more difficult? So I drew a second card just for clarity, ah, and that card was the devil. The symbol of being caught in a massive problem that can only be resolved by releasing or freeing ourselves from material bondage. So I'll, that's the devil. That was supposed to lead to clarity about the vision that Dick Algar was having. So material bondage refers to one's lifestyle, and it points to an attempt to go along with something that isn't working because of fears of being uncomfortable. We fear becoming uncomfortable when we have only one version of the good life, and all other versions are unacceptable because they look different, or they sound different, or they demand different things from us. And we don't think we can supply those things. We don't think we can respond or rise to the challenge. So here's the challenge with reading these two cards. The question I asked was, what information or advice can the cards offer us? And the cards promptly respond with a message but those specific cards can also reflect the situation responsible for the sobbing, vomiting congressman and the closure of Congress, making it tricky to stay on track with our question, which has to do with information for us. So in looking at the response of these cards, not only are we off track, not only are we not seeing the forest for the trees, Neither is the Congress. When a problem is as big as something like the possible closure of a government, it's easy to get caught up in focusing on some isolated aspect of that government, some miscellaneous detail, and never really look at the big picture, which is exactly what being unable to see the forest for the trees refers to. And what these cards say is that the government we have is off track and it is a complete waste of time. 
They also tell us that we are off track as well, and we are refusing to look at the big picture, probably because it's too daunting. And because of this, we are wasting time and energy. The Ten of Wands is a card of trying to maintain our material lifestyles even when it becomes an extraordinary burden to do so. It warns that by doing so, we will end up making life more difficult in the long run. The bottom line, not only is the government on the wrong track, but we are also on the wrong track. When you look at the card, you see a figure holding the wands, and that figure is leaning forward in a highly inclined position. And that, that represents being unwilling to let go and continuing to push forward blindly in hopes that something will change. The figure is wearing a reddish-brown tunic, again referring to a fox. It's a sorrel-colored tunic, again referring to lives that have gone sour or a system that has gone sour. Anyway, the message of the fox is to pay attention to the actions of others and not their words. Watch what they're doing, not what they're saying. This bit of advice is quite important given the current situation in Congress where a great deal of decision-making is done without announcement and a great deal of announcing is done without honest action. The very bright blue sky calls for a clear and lucid appraisal of the situation and it indicates that a good outcome is possible if we do so. However, the dirty yellow earth points to a muddy mixture of light and dark. We're not seeing the light the way we should. There's too much darkness mixed in with it. The ten wands point to so many interrelated issues that it's hard to know where to focus. This tells us that we have let problems pile up and pile up and up and have not dealt with them in a resolute or organized manner. We have not dealt with them in a timely manner either. So now it's become a huge problem. The house, there's a house in the distant background. It's actually a key feature of the Ten of Wands and it represents what everyone needs, a place to call home, a place of security, protection, and privacy. Yet, this card warns that such a place is receding into the distance while we remain overburdened and unable to see the big picture or our way forward. The Ten of Wands card is known as the Lord of Oppression, and the Devil card indicates that we may not see how we are chained to that oppression. The oppression is in the illusions that we maintain. And these illusions are in the jobs that we hang on to, in the acceptance of debt as normal, as the basis for a financial system. What kind of backward thinking is that? The illusion is in the size and location of the house we think we have to have to live in, the make of the car we drive, the name of the restaurants and the stores we shop at, the jewelry we wear, the money in our purse or our wallet, the vacations we take, and even the number of people who report to us. These material things are nice and they make us comfortable. But the illusion, and this is a, a big piece of this, the illusion is that they provide security. No, they don't. They just provide comfort. In fact, these things, you know, not only do not provide security, the opposite is true. They blind us to how insecure these materials leave us. Now, we can live perfectly well without these exact or specific material and creature comforts 
because we would find other materials and comforts to sustain us. Humans are exquisitely flexible and adaptable. Incredibly so. We are creative and adventurous. And at the same time, there is no reason to throw away everything we have or to think of these material things as bad or evil. They're not bad. They're not evil. There's just the need to recognize the illusion of security and then to create backup systems that provide real security should the current system falter or fail. Since the question asked was for information or advice regarding the vision of Congressman sobbing and vomiting as Congress closed down, the Ten of Wands presents us with a message that says our government is oppressive. It's completely on the wrong track, and nothing is being accomplished by it. The devil card then urges us to set ourselves free from such a system. The rather blunt advice that comes with this card is, quote, throw the ballast overboard and get a grip on what is happening. Generate the motivation needed to deal with it. Pretty timely advice, indeed. The number 10 holds a message in itself. It represents having reached a peak and gone past it. The more we pile on to something because we think it's the, you know, the best thing that happened when it's really reached its peak, the bigger and more difficult the cleanup operation becomes. So 10s point to beginnings and transitions, endings and transitions, not beginnings. 10s point to endings and transitions. So keywords for the 10 of wands are end results, transition, zeal, valor, expansion, ambition, the urge to move on and make way for the new, betrayal, treason, obstacle, and exhaustion. So this card is often seen as indicating that the energy of the wands, which is action and movement backed by passion, is at its most violent and can involve cruelty, malice, and injustice. That is pretty straightforward message from the Ten of Wands. Okay? We are at a time when action and movement is at its most violent. Okay, question number three. What is happening with the spirit of the people living in the U.S. and the Western countries at this moment in time in 2023? So I drew just one card this, this time for all the Western countries. And this month, it was the Four of Swords. The suit of swords has come up repeatedly over the past year. And here it is again. The thing that keeps being thrown in our face is the need for intellectual maturity. So evidently, we're not quite there yet. Swords highlight mental naivete, being gullible. Okay, they tell us, swords tell us, look deeper, think more broadly, grasp a situation, assess it realistically, and ascertain the kind of action needed before taking any action. So last month, when I asked this question, I was delighted to see the Page of Swords and the Knight of Swords, because these cards indicated that we were finally, finally turning into the wind to face the problems coming at us. We were ready to take stock of our situation and begin sorting out the truth from the propaganda, the theatrics, the pretenders. However, 
The Four of Swords indicated that something has handed us a setback. The activities in Israel may be the reason for much of this setback, but whether that is the case or not, the Four of Swords is the card of being suddenly frozen, paralyzed, and overwhelmed with something that has left us feeling numb. It indicates that something has occurred that requires yet more time to process and sort out. So on the card, we see a sarcophagus with a figure lying on it silently, perhaps lifelessly. A sarcophagus is something used to lay fallen heroes to rest. Is there something in the West, in the U.S., something in their ideology that has to be laid to rest that used to be the, the hero energy pulling us forward, moving us forward? So sarcophagus is used to lay fallen heroes to rest. It mainly represents human harshness, wrong thoughts, and martyrdom. Although it can also indicate conditions like high stress, it, it just incredible tension and paralysis. This figure lying on the sar sarcophagus can also represent a situation involving identity politics or the shock and trauma of suddenly losing faith in something. The figure lying on the sarcophagus is wearing armor and his hands are posed very conspicuously, almost unnaturally. It is not clear whether he is in prayer and deep meditation or whether he's in a state of shock, maybe a coma, or that he has died. Everything about the scene suggests a memorial service for someone or something or the end of faith in an idea or form of allegiance, or a state of being based on those ideas and allegiance. There's a stained glass window uh, in the upper left corner, and that stained glass window represents the only bright spot in the entire card. It shows a priest-like figure giving a blessing to someone kneeling in front of him, and the Latin word pax, P-A-X, meaning peace, is seen over his head. This offers a clear hint that peace is needed, and the figure on the sarcophagus may represent the idea that peace has died, especially since the figure is wearing armor, which indicates that he was involved in fighting a war. The stained glass, any stained glass, actually, is made of many small pieces of glass put together like a puzzle to form a complete picture. And this indicates that whatever caused the setback in our readiness to deal with our situation has scrambled the pieces we thought we had figured out. Stained glass, like a mosaic, symbolizes a need to look deeper in order to recognize patterns. That's a stained glass or mosaic. It symbolizes a need to look deeper in order to recognize patterns. So do we see a pattern in the way we have been set back? Is the pattern a string of distractions? Distractions that are designed to manipulate our emotions and cause cloudy thinking? With the exception of the stained glass window, the entire card has only two colors a dirty yellow, and a gray. Dirty yellow indicates that bright and enlightened thinking has been infiltrated by shadows and the dark thoughts of those with distorted minds. Ouch. <laughs> the sarcophagus and the sword attached to the side of it, as well as the figure lying on top of the sarcophagus, are all the same dirty yellow color, indicating that the current situation for the people of the West is characterized by poor perception, lack of clarity, 
and problems stemming from mental illness. The gray background in the rest of the card reinforces this mental condition and points to a combination of detachment and delusion, apathy, and thinking clouded by illusion. The swords hanging neatly and evenly spaced above the sarcophagus represent a need to hang up our weapons and reorganize our thinking. This card, the Four of Swords, calls for truce. It represents a need for a break from the mental chaos surrounding us. It tells us it's time to rest a moment, to review the situation again and again and again and again, and to come to grips with major contradictions that have appeared and challenged us. The warning is that if we do not take this rest, take this break, get reorganized, there is a danger that we will lose touch with reality and be lost in self-deception. And there are huge dangers that come with self-deception. This would result in all of our efforts going nowhere, especially if we do not let go of the biases, hurts, vengeance, and other perceptions that get in the way of good decisions. A setback is not the end of the road. However, it does point to the need for more time to deal with something that has made our situation more complex. The Four of Swords may tell us that the rug has been pulled out from us once again, but its message holds the promise that if we stop, if we move into a deeper assessment of the changes in our situation and allow ourselves to digest the turn of events that has brought us to a standstill, we can put the pieces together to form a new and coherent world, a peaceful world that avoids the pitfalls of the past. So keywords for the Four of Swords are conflict, mental afflictions, Analysis, strategy, negotiation, retreat, seclusion, exile, limits, war, thieves, and lawsuits. Overall, this card centers on the theme of sticking to one's goals, creating a secure and enduring base from which to unfold your life. And the four often symbolizes the initial phase of a new season of life being established. In nurturing this new season of life, the number four encourages us to integrate the four virtues of temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice into our lives and to remain vigilant. So that's the end of question number three. So let's sum up what we've said all together here. Number one, is Donald Trump coming back to be president of the United States? And the card pulled was the Knight of Wands, a card that is somewhat inconclusive yet highlights many of the characteristics and the qualities that would be needed in someone who becomes a president of the United States. Knights are symbols of transitional power and are called on to keep law and order during times of changing power structures, something that the U.S. is likely to be facing soon or actually is already facing. This card hints that something in our country has soured and become a wasteland. And we may not be able to return to our former status in the world. As for Trump himself, the Knight of Wands points to two highly important factors. One is that we may be caught up in a situation from which we will learn difficult but highly necessary lessons. This is a card of higher education, getting smart the hard way. 
And the other is that Trump may have moved into the realm of mythology and will continue to inspire people, whether he returns physically or not. The second question was, what information or insight can the cards offer regarding the remote viewing by Dick Allgaier and team in which congressmen were crying, vomiting, falling on the floor, and the entire Congress was shutting down as if for the last time. The cards drawn were the Ten of Wands and the Devil, indicating that humanity is trapped in oppression by a government system that accomplishes nothing and is a waste of time and energy. The warning carried by this card is that we can't see the forest for the trees. And because of this blindness, we will make things more difficult for ourselves in the long run. These two cards specifically point to an unwillingness to let go of our reliance on material goods. A dangerous situation should anything disrupt our access to them. We are encouraged to set ourselves free from illusions of security based on material goods and to realize that our government is past its peak and is no longer functioning well at all. And I would add, if at all. And question number three, what is happening with the spirit of the people living in the U.S. and the Western countries at this moment in time in 2023? And the card drawn here was the Four of Swords, indicating that we've had a serious setback over the past month. Last month, we were just beginning to move into the stance of being ready, willing, and able to face the many problems confronting us. But something has caused our thinking and assessments to freeze in a numb paralysis. A whole new set of puzzle pieces must be put together to reveal the new picture before us and its options. The warning here is that there is little clarity and we are in danger of losing touch with reality altogether. We are advised to go back to the drawing board, taking the four virtues with us and come up with new strategies for creating peace in a world that we want. So that's it for this month. Thank you for listening. And I hope you're not discouraged by the card's perspective that our government is useless or by the setback we have encountered. Keep your chin up and stay in observer mode. There's no need to act until it's time to act. Love you all. See you next month.